Wrestling is not a love story. It's much more. It's hope. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a new video here on the channel. This video is going to be a little different than what you're used to seeing on my channel because, well, in this video, we are reviewing and talking about the new Bray Wyatt documentary that just released on Peacock. It's called Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal. It's a new documentary that WWE and Peacock produced, Triple H executive produced, talking about the life and career of Wyndham Rotunda, formerly or what we know as Bray Wyatt. Now this documentary was, in one word, beautiful. Everything that it needed to cover, it covered. It talked about Wyndham as a kid, Wyndham growing up, Wyndham getting into WWE and all the way up until his passing and even after his passing. Uh, the documentary was narrated by The Undertaker, which in itself is something spectacular to hear. To hear The Undertaker, to hear Mark Calloway speak so eloquently about a friend, uh, a protege in, in a lot of different ways. Um, someone that he said should have been the one flat out to end the streak at WrestleMania, Bray Wyatt. Uh, this documentary, man, minutes in, I was in tears. It just, it was a thing of beauty. If you haven't already watched it, I encourage you all to go watch it on Peacock. Documentary is about two hours long, so you need some time to sit down and watch this. Uh, take some time out of your WrestleMania week. It's like watching a movie two hours and it starts off with who we know as Bo Dallas but in real in realistic times it's Taylor Rotunda and he speaks so beautifully about his brother which is the beginning of the documentary and that's why you're brought to tears at the beginning because he has such a love for his brother it is it's something that you don't see every day. It's something that you don't hear every day. And I think it's something that we can take away from this documentary to treat the people we love like we love them. Tell them we love them. Uh, in this case, Bray Wyndham was his idol, his best friend, his his big brother. And he talks all about that in, in the doc as well as Micah. Uh, their younger sister, his mom, his dad, everybody, his, his uncles. I mean, it, this documentary hit on everything that you would need to know about Wyndham. And what makes it so special is that we never got to see this side of Wyndham Bray Wyatt while he was here. Towards the end of his career, in the end of his life, his last run in WWE, we got to see... A more realistic side of Wyndham Rotunda, but it wasn't. Uh, there wasn't enough time to get to, to get to see that. And this documentary really does cover his time growing up as a kid, wanting to be a football player. I don't. I didn't know. There were so many things that I learned in this documentary that I didn't know before. Him wanting to go pro, um, playing football. Uh, just so many things. Um, in 2008, Bo Dallas, his younger brother, was signed to FCW. Bo was signed to the company before Bray. I didn't know that. Same year as when uh, Bray quit football and wanted to do what his brother was doing. He wanted to be with his brother. He wanted to grow with his brother. So that's when he got into FCW, and they created the Bo Bo and uh, they created the characters Bo and Duke Rotundos. Uh, and eventually became the FCW Tag Team Champions. And within a year, Bray Wyatt became a rookie on the first season of NXT. I don't know if you guys remember that season, if you were too young or just way too far ahead. Uh, that first season of NXT was a rookie and a mentor. And Bray, at the time, was Husky Harris. He came in and was a rookie. And... Funny enough, his mentor was Cody Rhodes. Uh, so, which, that was a really cool thing to see because I remember watching that 
in real time when it was happening, but I didn't, I don't, I didn't remember that Cody was his mentor. Now, a cool thing that I learned in this doc documentary was that the Bray Wyatt character was, well, one, it was a thing of beauty, which we already knew, but the way it was created, inspiration from Waylon Mercy, uh, Mercy eventually becoming one of the puppets, uh, Waylon Mercy inspiration, and then we got uh, Cape Fear, the movie with Robert De Niro. So Bray Wyatt was a mixture of those characters. Now, Wyndham had a friend named Bray White, which is where he took the inspiration for the name. And then he had a cousin named Wyatt. Uh, so all of those things together, the personality, the character, the name, Bray Wyatt, all came from inspiration all over. Uh, and in the documentary, you see Bray Wyatt, uh, really developed the character in NXT with Triple H. I didn't know this either. Uh, Triple H and Bray collabed on the whole lights out gimmick of the entrance, holding of the lantern. Triple H in the documentary even shows him like where to hold the lantern so it shows light on his face, like not too high, not too low. Like it was all a collaborative effort with the producers, Triple H, Bray Wyatt. All the inspiration behind the character. I mean, this was, I keep saying it, a thing of beauty. Now, something that I wasn't expecting to see in this documentary was the revelation of the health issues Bray suffered towards the end of his life. Um, and finally getting the story, the real story as to what happened with Bray. I know other outlets covered it and whatnot, and they said it was a heart attack or whatever it was, but... The documentary, you know, you have Jojo, his, his fiance, and just his family, and just they describe the situation how he, in early of 2002, uh, oh, 2002, 2023, uh, Bray caught COVID and it weakened his heart and it created uh, different issues health wise for him, and he needed to wear the vest. Uh, in case his heart stopped, it would revive him. Potential uh, pacemaker, pacema pacemaker, yeah. Uh, and uh, he suffered a heart attack in his sleep and passed away. And Jojo talks about finding him and just having to call his mom and, and his sister and, and like, how does she tell the kids? Like this documentary, I get, I get like, like a pit in my stomach just talking about it because it's such a it's just such a it's such a sad story um you know triple h documented in the doc in the, in the documentary that every time he would have those brainstorming sessions with trip with with bray for hours bray would end up calling him back and saying that he's just so thankful to be back home in wwe and he was so just grateful for his life and uh just he was just so full of life and so full of love. And it talks about his divorce um, from his first marriage and, and having two kids. And it, uh, sorry if I'm jumping all over. I'm just trying to get all the information I learned out in this review, kind of to tell you how great of a documentary it was, but also to give you all the information you need to know um, if you don't get a chance to watch it, if you don't have Peacock, if you, if, if you don't have the time to watch it. Um, or if you did watch it and maybe you missed something that I'm telling you now and now you know. So uh, I would recommend this documentary for any wrestling fan because it, does, it doesn't just talk about the story of Bray Wyatt and his career, but it, it, it goes way beyond that. It, it's about it's a story about uh, finding your way back to, to home, to your passion, to the things that you love, um, going through hard times and rising up and and you know losing yourself and finding yourself and just the story of a pro wrestler uh and a pro wrestling story that had such beautiful details tragic ending but beautiful details all throughout it um his uncle's wrestling his grandfather wrestling his dad wrestling his brother wrestling i mean this was a family affair of the rotundas and you see the emotion from his family just as they talk about his passing and 
the one that hit me the hardest was was Taylor's. They show uh, clips of um, his celebration of life and the eulogy that Taylor gave. My gosh, oof, that's uh, it's tough stuff. And you hear you hear from the likes of Natalia, um, who I didn't again I didn't know, but during that time frame of him returning to WWE at, at Extreme Rules, Bray quietly asked uh, TJ and Natalia to train at their dungeon to help them get you know back in shape and get ready for in-ring competition, ultimately to get back to WWE. Uh, that you hear from uh, Eric Rowan, you hear from Braun Strowman, you hear from Alexa Bliss, you hear from uh, just everyone who was really involved in his life. Randy Orton, they t- they cover uh, in the documentary John Huber passing away, Luke Harper, Brody Lee, and a lot of never before seen footage footage of Bray breaking down doing a tribute video for for Brody Lee something that I, we never seen before so many things never seen before because Bray was so so protective of his character that like so many things we didn't get to see and I respect that so much about him because you know today in social media and the social age there's, there's blurred lines between the character work and the human behind the performer. And Bray was so protective of like, j- just like The Undertaker was. Um, I really did like um, in the credits of the documentary at, after, the, after it ends, uh, The Undertaker who is narrating, I mentioned that before, he narrated the video, the documentary, and he pours two glasses of whiskey while he's doing the uh, the voiceover, the narration. He cheers and he drinks and it's a toast to Bray. And it's it's beautiful to see those little details. Um, what really got me was the ending of the documentary where you see a tribute video to Bray and Wyndham. And then it cuts to... Uh, before, before I get to that, uh, there's so... Sorry, I know I'm jumping around. There's so much I want to talk about with this documentary. Um, I'm going to get to that in a little while. So put a pin in that. We'll come back to that. The new, uh, so they confirmed basically in the documentary that the fiend care, the fiend character would be returning, uh, upon Bray's return. Uh, there was a new mask that, uh, Bray had put together with his, one of his best friends, if not his best friend, Jason Baker, who, uh, created the masks and the costumes for Bray Wyatt over the years. Uh, and even Bo Dallas confirming again, Bo Dallas was Uncle Howdy. Something that we didn't, we knew, but we wasn't like confirmed, confirmed as like hearing it from him. Uh, so uh, yeah, Jason Baker had uh, created a new mask with so much detail. I mean, uh, to the point where the stitching had was Roman numerals that like the stitching on the mouth, and you'll see. I'll, I'll show pictures throughout this uh, review of what I'm discussing or what I'm describing, but the, the new Fiend mask had uh, stitching along the mouth as if it were a Joker-esque face. And uh, the stitching was in Roman numerals, which would have been the, the date of uh, Bray's and JoJo's wedding in December. Um, there was the names of his children along the pinstripes on his pants. There was so many different things. So you, you remember how Bray would do that spider crawl where in this new Fiend character, he wanted to do a different crawl where it wouldn't be a backwards, it would be frontwards and his hair would fall forward and there would be a, a, an upside down face on the back of his mask that when he would lean his head forward and his hair would fall, you would see a face and the face was actually sculpted to be Jojo's face, but more of in a doll mask-esque way, uh, creepy way. Uh, so there's so many new details about this Fiend character that we would be getting um, upon his return. Unfortunately, but his passing, we didn't get it. But uh, yes, yeah, so now back to what I put a, pin, put a pin in before regarding the ending credits. So if you watch the documentary, watch to the very, very end, past The Undertaker talking about Bray, past the credits. There's a scene where you see the lantern 
uh, the lights flicker, you see the lantern flicker, the light turns on, and behind the lantern is Uncle Howdy, signifying that uh, Taylor Rotunda, Bo Dallas, will be returning at some point as Uncle Howdy to uh, essentially pick up the lantern, continue the legacy of Bray Wyatt, uh, Wyndham Rotunda, and, you know, finish the i hate to say it, but finish the story of what bray wanted to do in wwe in his professional wrestling career overall this documentary was a 10 out of 10 i highly recommend it to anybody who is a bray wyatt fan a pro wrestling fan and just a uh, uh, a lover of a of a real real decent great human being uh Bray Wyatt was something else. He was a brilliant creator. He was a brilliant mind. He was a great friend, brother, father, son, um, and everything that could really go into describing a great human being. Um, he is highly missed every day i think in the wrestling community he brought such a unique character and story and overall just work aura to wwe and professional wrestling he changed the industry forever alexa bliss says it in the documentary he changed the industry forever and uh yeah watch the documentary we miss you bray uh and can't wait to see what Taylor does upon his return to the ring. And really, we'll be rooting for him in honor of you. And uh, thanks for everything you've done for the business, Bray. And we miss you. Cheers.